So recently, I just got done closing down my February budget, closing out that February budget and starting that new tracking period for March. And I thought it would be fun and very helpful to kind of take you along on that journey with me of what it looks like when I get paid or when I am starting that new tracking period. I'm also going to be walking you through my full budget recap for February, also going over where do my money go worksheets and what that process looks like. So really, I shoot these videos, especially videos around closing out my budget or showing you kind of what my payday routine looks like in hopes that it really helps you and motivates you to start tracking your spending. So starting in a place of knowledge and really having awareness around where your money is going is critical if you are wanting to improve or get better with your finances, right? We can't change what we don't know. You also don't know what mountain you have to climb unless you know where you are starting. So we may not want to track our spending. We may, may not want to see what's really happening, but sometimes we need that slap in the face moment to really light a fire under us to make significant and lasting change. I also hope these videos motivate you and help you with closing out process and filling out the where do my money go worksheets, which I feel like is a very crucial step. This is the, the, the part and the process that helps you extract that helpful, important information from all of your hard work of tracking your spending. Writing down your spending on a piece of paper doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything unless you know what that spending is telling you. That's what this process is all about. So let me show you what the heck is going on for closing out my budget and starting that new tracking period. First and foremost, I need to apologize about my nails. I just got done taking off my press-ons and so I still have some nail glue on my nails. So you're not gonna have some pretty nails in this video, okay? This is real life. So let's go ahead and look at February. And what I wanna show you very quickly, one of the first things that I do when closing out my budget, step number one, always, always have your spending updated for February. Get 100% updated with your cash spending and your checking account spending. Now, little background on my expense trackers. I have an expense tracker for every area of money movement in my life. How am I spending money? Through my debit card and through cash spending. Separate expense trackers. So very quickly, let's look at my checking account spending. I got all of that updated. And you might notice a couple of things I want to point out when it comes to transactions because Part of closing out your budget also means you are tracking your spending correctly. Let me show you a couple different scenarios that happened this month so you can track correctly as well. Okay, so if we look at my February expense tracker, you notice here on 2-1, I have a transaction that says envelopes. I have a line through it that says don't count. And this is because of how I track my spending. I have a separate expense tracker for my checking account spending, my debit card purchases, and then another expense tracker here with my cash spending. This is me pulling out cash for my cash envelopes for my variable spending. This is so I can stuff my variable spending budget cash envelopes that I have. Now, because I track the spending of these dollars on my cash expense tracker, I put a line through this transaction on my checking account expense tracker just to tell me, hey, Miko, don't count this transaction when you're closing out your budget because if you're tracking the 1318 withdrawal here and you're tracking the spending over here on your cash expense tracker, you're tracking it twice. So for me, I only track the spending of those actual dollars on my cash expense tracker. I don't use the transaction over here for closing out my budget. Of course it does affect my balance, but I'm not going to use that transaction per se to close out my budget. Another scenario I want to show you, if we go over here to my cash expense tracker, I use sinking funds in my life. Now sinking funds is just saving a little bit from each paycheck to cover an expense you know is coming up or unexpected expenses. One of those things for me is my pet sinking fund. Just recently I had to put both my cats down um, unfortunately, they just started declining around the same time and it was just, I did not want them suffering. One, they're both over 18, but I had to use a pet sinking fund, money that I had saved from previous paychecks to cover an expense right now, the euthanasia and cremation of 
my two beautiful cats. So $600, it wasn't in the budget. It wasn't what I was planning for. So I track the spending of the dollars and then I track the savings inflow, the money coming into my life that covers that expense. And I add that as a deposit. These two cancel each other out. So if you're using sinking funds or savings from a previous period in your life, you track the spending of those dollars and then track how you what income you're using or what savings you're using to cover that transaction. And it will look like this. I did the same with my Valentine's Day sinking fund. It's a savings inflow for 377. I spent 346 for Valentine's Day and then I took the rest and I saved it towards Valentine's Day 2025. I still had to track that because it's where I'm what I'm doing with that money. So that's two scenarios I feel like come up a lot. Now once I am done updating my expense tracker, I come here to my February budget and I fill out the actual column on my budget. So I budget, I have a dollar amount that I budget, but then I have an actual amount that's happening. And sometimes the actual spending does not match our budget spending. So I like to go down and figure out, okay, what am I actually spending? And, and if they differ, do I have more money left over? Or do I have less money? And then I have to make that decision. What do I do with it? Or what do I need to do in the future to ensure that I'm not in the negative? So that's another step. That's what I do when I fill out my where do my money go work worksheet. So let's jump over there very quickly. So let's do a quick recap of my budget for February. My total monthly inflow was 13,338. Now remember, that is not earned income. That is not my paycheck income. It includes many things like my starting balance. What was in my checking account the day I started my new tracking period or the day I'm closing out my budget, which is the exact same time, exact same day. So I started the month of February with $456 in my checking account. I did not roll over any cash. So I didn't have any cash starting balance. My paycheck income was $5,600 for the month. Other income, Chris gives me $600 a month. Um, so I put that in my other income. And then savings use, a lot. $6,682 is what I use in savings. Do you see why it's so, so, so critical and important to save for ex expenses you know are coming up? Could you imagine if I did not have this money saved? And then I'm scrambling, trying to come up with the money or I'm making spending decisions that are reactionary instead of intentional. So that was a lot because I had my house insurance due as well as my car insurance. Total $13,338. You can see my um, insurance, $5,552. 42% of my inflow went towards that. Makes sense because my house insurance alone is over four grand. And then um, big, big one. I had to make that hard decision to increase my food budget going forward. You'll see in March, I increased it by $100. Technically, I should do by $300, but I always teach and preach small incremental steps when you are making changes to your budget. Can you sustain those changes? Maybe I don't need to increase my food budget to $900, which, I, which is what I've spent the last two months. Maybe I can really challenge myself to lower that even by a little bit, so I'm increasing it only to $700. If it's in green, I was under. If it's in red, I was over. Now, of course, pets, I was over by the 600 because that was not in my budget. I was over. It's always good to be over for your savings. And that's, I mean, James was over. I was over by $50. I never really have a planned medical budget. Um, but yeah, I was over for $50, dentist visit. Okay, so let's go over to my February monthly debt and savings breakdown. So... I don't have debt. So I'm using the monthly debt and savings breakdown for investments. My total monthly inflow was at 13,338. Of that, I invested $800, which is about 6% of that inflow. Majority of it went to the 529s. I have an individual brokerage account just for me. It's a non-retirement account. We also have a non-retirement joint account, brokerage account for me and Christopher for our joint goals as a married couple partnership unit and team. Now, my monthly income. So you can see the difference. The total monthly income is what is used, which means that I'm not using my savings inflow into my life for that month because you're not going to save 
money that you are using from your savings, if that makes sense. So of the 6,656, which makes is my starting balance, my earned income, and my other income, I saved $1,875, which is 28% of my income. Now, tw- that money went towards a big majority sinking funds, 97%. The rest went towards V-Day 2025 and then my $5 challenge. Here is the purpose of this. Most of the time in our lives, we are working on multiple financial goals at once. This ensures and shows you plain as day what, where your money is going and how much of that extra discretionary money you have and where is it going in order of priority to your goals. So when I look at this, for example, 62% of the money I invested went towards 529s. Is investing towards my children's college accounts the most important thing to me in comparison to other things? Yes. Now keep in mind, this investments here does not include my retirement contributions. Those are taken from my paycheck and I budget using net income. So my investments here are everything outside of my retirement. My retirement comes first. It's by far what I contribute to the most when it comes to my investments, but it's taken out of my paycheck before I see that money. Below that though, right after that is my 529s. I'm taking care of me and then I'm taking care of my children. It's what it's that's a very personal decision. Everyone will be different. Those are my values. Same with savings. Outside of an investing, how many things am I saving for? Now, if I look at this, 97% went towards taking care of future expenses. Is that the most important thing compared to these other things? Absolutely. Things like property taxes, house insurance, car insurance holidays, events that I know are coming up. I know we have three trips this year, one to the Tri-Cities, one to Arizona, and one to Cabo. Those have to be taken care of and paid for. So I'm not going into debt for those types of luxuries. Next, let's look at my where did my money go monthly spending comparison. So with this, Did I spend more in February than January? I did. Look at the increase in income that I had from from January to February. But that's because of all those savings that I used for my insurance sinking funds. I also spent $8 more on food. Now, last year, I didn't contribute anything to our joint checking. Me and my husband have a joint checking account that we use only for, dedicated totally for baby spending and expenses only. Now, and that includes his 529. We each contribute $250 for a total of $500 to his 529. That's out of our joint checking account, which I don't show out of privacy for my husband. It's his income, his spending too. So I just say $450 is what I transfer to that account monthly. And I just put it under my baby category. Last month, we did not because we had an accumulation of money in there. We could take a month off from doing it. Also, I was over, like I said, big, 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 $5,544 over in insurance compared to January. Also holiday, because in February I was celebrating Valentine's Day. Are you hitting those short-term goals that you are setting yourself month to month? What are those trends from month to month that you are seeing? That is a full budget recap. Now, very quickly, let's get into... March. I want to show you this. What does my expense tracker look like when I get paid or the first day of my tracking period? It looks like this. So I always have my paycheck as a deposit. Chris's income, other income, $600. My sinking funds, I am always saving for my sinking funds pretty much before any other bills are paid. I'm paying myself first. And over here on my cash expense tracker, same thing, sinking funds. Now, when you go to my March budget, all of these are sinking funds, all of these. The ones in white are what I save in cash. I pull this cash out the same time I pull out cash from my variable cash envelopes for my spending. Now, I have a teller slip. Don't pay attention to the quantity. I messed that up. Thank God the, the teller caught it. <laughs> put the, I put the value in the quantity. I don't need $450 bills. <laughs> 
but she got it right. I got what I needed. I needed $400 and $50 bills for 1318. Now this 1318 includes all of my variable spending that I need in cash and all of my sinking funds. And when I pull out that cash, remember I need to track the spending of those dollars. So on my cash expense tracker, boom, $368 is what I had I am saving for in cash, which I'm going to be updating my savings goal binder with you today. But that's what the 368 is. It's all these white ones that I'm saving for in cash. And then all of my pink ones are online transfers that I do to separate savings accounts at my credit union. Yes, I have this many completely different savings accounts. My credit union allows me to have as many savings accounts as I need with no fees and no minimums. Take advantage of that organization if you have it. So that's what this sinking fund savings transaction is right here. 1341. And then, of course, that transfer to that joint account for baby expenses. Now, to show you that this is a true routine for me. This is what it looks like every single time I start a new tracking period. Let's look at January. I'll show you. So if we look at January, TBM paycheck, Chris's income, envelopes, cash coming out, sinking fund savings, baby transfer, February, sinking fund savings. If we go to January, same thing. TBM paycheck, Chris's income, envelope, sinking fund savings, sinking fund savings at the very top. It is a routine. I do it like clockwork. I have this consistency and dedication to make financial progress. I am paying myself first. I'm st staying dedicated to that plan. Now, what we are going to do today is I have my cash envelopes that I need to stuff. For my variable spending. So I have a have all my cash that I pulled out to stuff my cash envelopes and to stuff the things that I'm saving for in cash. So for food, I'm giving myself $700. So I'm gonna pull out the seven one hundred dollar bills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that envelope stuffed. Beauty, I do 50. Envelope stuffed. Fun, I also do 50. I do a lot of 50s, I notice with my envelopes, but it's what works. Miscellaneous, covering, this covers unexpected expenses that pop up in between my paydays because your emergency fund is never enough. Household, I'm also doing 50. I think I'm doing 50 for the rest of my, so that one's stuffed. Okay, and then 54 pets. That one's done. Guess what? Cash spending is set, done, and ready to go for this month. This is what I'm giving myself for spending this month. Big majority being food. All right, so those are done. Now let's get into, I'm just gonna move my budget binder aside. So this is my savings goal binder. This is where I'm keeping all of the saving goals that I'm saving for cash in one place. Let's update it. So I have all of the savings goals or sinking funds that I'm saving for this year in 2024. So I have quick access. I can look and see that very quickly. Here's where I'm saving all of my cash. And then I have cute little progress trackers so I can see visually very quickly as a motivator where I am on those goals. So let's start stuffing. So for Chris's B-Day, I have $67 a month is what I save. So 50, 60, 5, 6, 7. And then I just go and find Chris's B-Day. Stuff that envelope. So I added another $67 to that. I just write 3 1. This is my March pay for 67. That gives me a total of 201. So that one's done. So I'll, I do, I stuff the cash envelopes first 
So let's go 4th of July is $17. 10, 5, 6, 17 dollars. And that's for 4th of July. Have my little envelope here for 4th of July. Put that in there. And I just write three, one. This is my March paycheck for $17, which gives me a total of $51, okay? And I do this for each one of my envelopes. So James' birthday is $58, 50, five, six, seven, eight. Go to James's birthday, which is right here. Stuff that. Once again, three, one, March pay plus 58 gives me 116 plus 58, so 174. All right, and then big one, Christmas, or sorry, back to school, $8. Five, six, seven, eight. I find that back to school envelope which is, that's sports, wedding anniversary, back to school, right here. So, put that in there, back to school. Three, one, March pay, plus eight, so three, oh, not three, 274, okay. So then the next one is Christmas, which is right here for 182, 150, 60, 70, 80, 82, one, two for Christmas. Put that in there. Three, one, March, pay. 182 equals 546. Valentine's Day is also eight, five, six, seven, eight. So Valentine's Day, where is that? Right here. Three, one. March pay plus eight, which is 55. Wedding anniversary, 13, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I go to my wedding anniversary. Three, one, March pay plus 13. 39. All right, and then sports. Last one, sports, $15. So, three, one, March pay plus 15. So, those envelopes are now stuffed. Now it's time to fill in our trackers. So, James's birthday. It's 174. Now each one of these, there's a hundred icons. So I am saving a total of $400 for James's birthday. So I just took the 400 and divided by how many icons there were. That means each present little icon is $4. So if he has $174, 174 divided by four, that equals 43 of these should be filled out. So 10, 20, 30, you one, three, so one, two, three. So it should be here, because 10, 20, 30, 43. So I'm just gonna get out this purple. So this one has been updated, and I do this for each tracking worksheet that I have. So once those are completely filled out, all these are stuffed, my savings goal binder has been updated for the month. Anytime I need to spend from any of these envelopes, which I can do at any times, I just come and I can write down on my spending tracker on the back if I spent anything from it so I have an updated balance. That is something I do every single time I get paid. Now you can see on my March budget, I'm already starting to fill in this actual column now that I've stuffed 
all of these cash ones, I can write in, okay, I did that. That's how much I actually saved. Let's me know it has been done. So that is completed as well. All right, so that is a full budget overview for February, looking at my budget recap, my where did my money go worksheets, and also what it kind of looks like in my life when I start a new tracking period or payday, because I budget every single time I get paid, I'm using the budget by paycheck method. Now, for anyone who's gonna be coming at me that says, Miko, that seems like a lot. That seems very overwhelming. That seems very like extensive. Let me just say it looks like that because I'm going through and, and going into every detail, every step and explaining it as I go along. But really this process on the days I close out my budget and start a new tracking period takes me, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. And that's only on one day a month. The rest I'm spending maybe five minutes every morning on my financial routine. So when I do all this, I don't see overwhelm. I don't see work. I don't see tediousness. What I see is peace of mind and security, taking care of myself, taking care of my future, getting those expenses prepared for. That's what I feel and see when I do this process. And I know a lot of other people who have gone through this also feel this way at the end of the month when you are closing out your budget or hitting the reset button when you are starting a new tracking period. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe.